Happy New Year, everyone. I Happy New Year. Hope you've had a blessed Christmas. Um, I took I took about a week off um, from preaching, but I'm back. I had a I had a very fun Christmas with my family. Had actually a Boxing Day thing because we weren't sure about Christmas with the snow. So we moved it up to Boxing Day, and it was fun, and it was so great to see everybody. Everybody had a wonderful Christmas, and Happy New Year. Today's sermon is called Break the Roof. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We love on you today. Um, because of what you've done and what you're about to do, not only in the coming years, but in years to come. We bless you because of who you are. We bless you because you're so loving and so kind. We bless you because not of who, not just of who you are, but because you are. Because you exist, you deserve to be blessed. You don't. You don't have to do anything to be blessed, God. But we just bless you because of the fact that you exist. Because it is because of you existing that we exist and the whole earth exists. We just want you to permeate the atmosphere today. Speak to me. Speak through me in a wonderful way. Touch me with your Holy Spirit, Lord, today. Let every word that fall from my mouth be a word that you've given me to speak. Let, let not Rachel speak, but let the Lord speak through Rachel today. Amen. Um, so today's sermon is called Break the Roof. It comes from that scripture in Matthew, uh, not in Matthew, in Luke, um, wh where, we, where we see Jesus is preaching and there are a whole slew of people outside, like it's, uh, it's like a whole, um, people inside the synagogue and and they're inside a house. Somebody said it was Peter's house, but the Bible doesn't say that. Uh, so Jesus was having like an old school camp meeting in someone's house. So, and, but, um, and everybody was there, like the, I envision, um, with my novelist brain, like people lining up around the block and not uh, just standing room only in this house. And just the back walls filled with people and with their different um, sicknesses and what abnormalities and maybe just people that just need hope. You know, I can envision this house being filled with people. Um, as I said, my house was filled with people on Christmas. Uh, I had eight, I live in a very small apartment and I had eight people uh, in, in, not really small, but it's kind, we needed to bring in extra chairs so I envision this being a gathering like I had on uh, uh, Boxing Day, um, where there's, there's barely room for anything. Like, the, it's standing room only, basically, while Jesus is healing and talking. Because and, at this time, his... His, 
his healing power and his connection to his father has been heard like um, throughout the whole uh, throughout the whole town. It's been like it's just been known because other people have seen the miracles. We've seen the you know, we've seen what he did so far up until that point. So his his presence just brought people to this person's house. And um Okay, so he he was at this person's house in an old school camp meeting and people, um, they, they had probably locked the doors because the house was full. They were, what well, we would say, at capacity. Um, and these four guys um, brought their friend, uh, who, who couldn't walk to, to this camp meeting, but they couldn't get in. Um, uh, so, so what they did, they couldn't find anybody to let them in, the, the meeting was closed, and everywhere was packed, um, and they, they decided to, they couldn't find another way in, so they decided to bring their friend up onto the roof. And then, once they brought him up to the roof, it lowered him down. And Jesus, seeing their faith, healed, um, healed the man. So I'd like to talk about um, breaking the roof. Um, sometimes, um, in this world, uh, we are so afraid to do something different or do something out of character. But the Lord is saying today, for this year, I need you to understand that the roof that you put for yourself, the limits you put on me, they need to be broken. And they won't just be broken by me. But like, you'd be like, it's too easy for me to just break the roof on your life and everything come flooding in, but um, when he says, when I do that, um, you, you, you don't learn anything. He said, if I were to answer every prayer and do everything the way you want it, it wouldn't build anything in you. The thing about challenges is, although challenges are difficult, they're trying, they're, they're inexcusable. Sometimes God, God will use your challenge to strengthen you. Um, because there is nothing like a challenge or a situation or a storm or whatever you want to call it to strengthen you and reveal what's in you because good times feel good 
but good times usually don't reveal what's in you. And the challenges do that. Saying, this year, guaranteed, you will face challenges. You will face everything you could possibly imagine. But remember that, first of all, I'm with you. Second of all, the limits that you have to be broken and they cannot uh, be broken by me. They have to be broken by you because sometimes what we're waiting for is in our hands. We're waiting for God to break chains and do um, his God things, but Sometimes the chains are within our reach to break, you know, like sometimes the chains that we have to break are the chains of silence. Some, some things um, that you're going through, the reason you're going through them is you're struggling by yourself. And um, silence can bring even more struggle and, and light, or if you speak on something to a close friend or family member, it can break that chain right there. Um, like, because words released produce miracles. Let me say that again. Words release produce miracles. Stop saying staying silent about something that you're struggling with. Now, I'm not saying to go on Facebook and put it on blast and uh, cuss people out or whatever. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying to do that. But I'm saying saying. In order for you to be free from whatever, you need to put words to whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, even if it's just to God. Um, I've learned in my life that I need to put words to what I'm going through. I need to stop doing the uh, appropriate Christian prayer and um, talk to the Lord about what really it is I'm going through. And I need to walk with him step by step by step by step. Um, and he'll direct me to the people that need to hear. And sometimes uh, we just think we, we're super men or super women and we can go through it alone and we don't need, we don't need anybody, we don't even need God. Um, some of us use God as a, a, a worship to God Sunday, um, but he says, I want to be the Lord of your life every day. There's a difference between sal between uh, salvation and making him the Lord of your life. See, salvation is um, when you accept the Lord in your life in your life um but when he's the lord of your life you you give over everything so many christians have accepted the lord in their life that they're saved uh they've received the lord's spirit they've received the baptism um, they received the infilling of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. 
but they have not made Jesus the Lord of their lives. Lord, um, uh, to my way of thinking, means leader. So when you, the old time Brits, when they said, Lord, they meant leader, they meant protector, they meant all of that. So we, we have gotten saved, but we haven't made the Lord. We haven't made Jesus or God the Lord of our lives. We have not made him leader of our lives. We could, we could say that we are saved and the Lord not be leader of our lives in every area. We could go to church. We could sing the songs. We could do the, the worship thing for days or whatever and the Lord still not be the leader of our lives. He wants to be the leader of your life today. And once he's the leader, then he will direct you in certain areas of your life, in every area of your life. And you'll say, how do, do you know it's God? Well, the truth is, dear, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just have to step out in faith and just say, um, Lord, just help me. And you will make mistakes. But those mistakes will be catalyst for God to get you where he needs you to be. And some of you have um, put major limits on God, like, no, no, I can't do that. No, no, I can't do that. And he's saying, like the man with the friends, he's saying, break the roof off your limits. He's like, break the roof off. If you can't get in, one way, get in another. If you can't get in one way, that way, there's another way. He's like, there is always a way to achieve the purpose that I've ordained for you. And you need to understand that there, there might be limits in humans and might be protocol, whatever. But he said, um, this year, it's time for a new protocol, my protocol. He's like, too many, there's been too many years, too many New Year's Eves that we've set out to do things. And at the end of the year, we still haven't done it because we're so concerned about protocol. And, um... Sometimes, um, uh, sometimes I was speaking to God about this the other day. Like, my conversations with God are really weird because they're like human conversations. You, you would think there was someone else in the room. So, we were talking the other day. And, um, I was thinking... I was asking some very scary questions. I've been asking some very scary questions lately. Um, I'm like, Lord, is everything that we do in church you? Or, or do we think it's you, but it's really us? And he's like, he's like, no. He's like, what happens is some sometimes something works for one ministry, so uh, the other ministry follows that and it continues on. 
for generations and generations and generations. He's like, and nobody asks, is this how I want it to be? Nobody asks if this is how I want to preach a sermon. Nobody asks if this is how I want worship to be or whatever. He's like, we, we are all just going on because this is what we know. This is what we feel comfortable with. But he's saying it's time for the church corporately and individually to break the roof. To do more than those friends did. Because what those friends did was lead their friend to the roof. And they, they put him down through the roof. But he said, no, he said, I don't want anybody to put anybody through the roof or try and get around the roof. I want pastors, I want saints in their individual lives, in their church lives, to break the roof. Break the thing that you think, oh, it has to be done this way. We have to sing the two songs and then we do the sermon. See, God's way, ways are much higher than our ways. We say that, but I, I don't think we, we believe half the things that we say. I think we say them because they sound good. But really, if, we're, if we were really to do what we say, if we were really to ask God, God, is this the way you want me to preach a sermon? Is this the way you want worship to be done? Is this what you want? Or is, or is it what we're just used to? And we're asking you uh, to come into what we're used to because anything else would scare us. And... Church for a long time, both individually and both and, and corporately, have been doing things because we think it's the way to be done. We think that the we think the only way to spread the word is to be on a pulpit Sunday morning. And when I look at the at the ministry of Jesus and how he walked and how he, how he, um, uh, was with the people, he, he was rarely, if ever, on a pulpit on a Saturday on Shabbat. He was never, he was always with the people. And he thrived on conversation. And he just totally wrecked everything that they thought this was religion. He hated all that stuff. He couldn't stand it. Um, and I think because one person did things, so another person followed said, that's a good idea. Why don't we do that? Not ask, not even asking, Lord, is this a good idea for us, for our ministry, for our, for our little neck of the woods? We just did things because, hey, other churches are doing it, so let's jump on the bandwagon. And the Lord's saying, no. I need you to break the roof off of what you think. I need you to turn your whole thought processes um, around. He says, I need you to become stupid so that you can be sp smart. He's like, I'll say that again because that's how he gave it to me. He said, I need you to become stupid so that you're smart. We think we know too much. 
And I think I can sense the Lord saying, I need you to act like you don't know anything so I can teach you everything. He says, he said he, he wants to teach people how, how to be led in their own individual lives and own individual circumstances. And he wants to teach preachers how to do it in their own um, part of the world, whatever part, um, whatever little issues that their part is having. See, the gospel's the same everywhere, for everyone, everywhere. But the way you do it in your area it has to be different according um, to your personality, according to your uh, bent and talents and different uh, ways of being, according to your strengths. Um, I can really sense that um, this breaking of the roof is going to leak all kinds of different types of ministry, all kinds of different formats of preaching and teaching. And some people will, will do uh, communal preaching with, with other people, and some people will do a sit-down preaching where we all gather together at one table and, and discuss and share together and other different forms of spreading the word and uh, according to their personality, according to their bent, because what's happening now is because we're all doing it the same and trying to be like we were back way back when we all, we all are trying to uh, do the worship team thing and then we, we come out on the pulpit and preach the word. Of course we all have different styles, but he's saying oh, we need to vary even from that, even the way we preach the word uh, uh, according to our personality, our bent, our talents, um, you know, it's just really amazing. And the Lord wants to, because there are so many different kinds of people, there's a preacher for every person. But if everybody's preaching on a pulpit and everybody's doing the five person worship team, and two song or three song thing. Like there's no, there's no difference for those other people who are not built that way to preach the word of God. He wants everyone, preacher or not, to ask, how are you, are you speaking the word through me? Because he speaks the word through everyone very differently. And because of this, he wants everybody to know that there is some, there is a way that receive the word that comes to your specific um, talents, your specific bent, your specific whatever. Not that the word itself is selective. Let me put this as a caveat. The word itself is not selective. I'm not saying you can pick and choose and whatever. I'm just saying the delivery of the word. The Lord wants to break open different kinds of delivery of the word uh, to people and to pastors too. Um, the Lord wants to be 
the Lord wants churches to be as different and diverse as their pastors are. Um, so, like, if you are into visual art, use that in your sermon. If you're into music, like I am, use that in your delivery. If you like um, socializing with people and answering questions, um, have that as part of your sermon. Oh, and he's like, don't be afraid to be weird. Don't be afraid to be perceived as crazy because I got your back. And the Lord wants people everywhere to break the ceiling. Don't go through the ceiling. Don't try and like, okay, we'll try and uh, We'll try and um, take it off and put it back. He wants us to break it. Um, he says sometimes order is good, but it has to be his order. Protocol is good, but it has to be his protocol. He says um, most often in our lives and in our homes, it's not his order. It's what we're used to. It's the patterns and cycles that we've grown up with, and it's not his. He's saying, for your homes and for your kids, um, there, is, there are different ways, um, out of the box ways, he wants you to uh, deal with individ uh, your individual children because your children are very different and they need different guidance and different things. And he's telling me to tell you to ask him about um, how you can break the ceiling when parenting your children. That's for somebody. And even in our jobs, he wants us to break the ceiling in our jobs. What have you been dreaming of that you're afraid to tell your boss? What idea have you been thinking of and you're afraid to step on? He's like, break the ceiling. It doesn't matter if people have done it before. It doesn't matter if this is the norm. He's saying, this is a of, of of time us we'll call it a new year but for him it's just a continuation of time I need you to break the ceiling I need you to change your thinking I need you to admit that you don't know anything everything and that you're that you're stuck and when COVID happened and we were all stuck at home and not going to church anymore, I was convinced that the church would have like some different things going on, different ways of delivering the word and all that stuff. But it was still the same. Not that the old, not that the old way isn't good. Um, to be quite honest, I was um, frankly surprised that there that there was no difference uh, between preaching with people in the room or outside the room. I was waiting for some innovation to hit where we where we just uh go to people in a different way but no instead of instead of doing that all we did was uh preach in empty rooms like we would but we we neglected 
uh, as the body of Christ, to take the time and say, God, okay, we're all stuck at home. What, what could I do differently to reach uh, people? And I'm sure some people do this, but, but I, 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 in my heart, wanted to see more. Because I know that God is bigger than what we think he is. God is so much bigger and brighter. But we as humans, we're so stuck in this is church, this is not church. This is what we do, this is what we don't do. And um, the Lord wants to break that ceiling. The Lord wants to tell you that the only ceiling that he wants to um, instill is the ceiling that he put on his own work, not a ceiling that we put on his work. I see he wants to do so much, but our idea of church and our idea of life and our, our idea of home and our kids are stopping him from doing what he wants to do. And you would say, Rachel, he can't be stopped. No, he can't be stopped. Um, but, but he is also a gentleman, so he will, he will rarely, rarely override your will for his. Rarely. On a few occasions, he will, but he will rarely override your, your will for his, and he totally wants you today to break the ceiling and have courage to break the ceiling and know that he's got your back. And, you know, this excitement, this whatever you're feeling, it's not only you. There are millions of people around the world just wanting to break the ceiling, but not knowing how and being afraid and fearful. He's saying, walk, and I'll show you the way. He's like, you're not walking blindly. You're walking with me, and I will carry you and lead you. On the other side of this, there is, there is lot life, and people will come flooding to me because of your courage to break the ceiling, and he's, she's like, um, like, I, I, I just want you. I just want my, he says, I just want my darling to know there is so much more in her than she knows about. When I say my darling, I mean the church. He's like, I just want her to know that there is so much more in her than, than she could ever dream of if she would just take that first step and break the ceiling and not be afraid to break the ceiling. Church, this year is going to be a wonderful year. I'm going to do some wonderful things, but we need to be prepared to do some really stuff that may may seem out there and know that God will be with us. If it's him, he's obligated to um, help us with it. Now, if it's not him and you're just going up there to be different and to be uh, extra, he doesn't have to support it. But if it's him, he will take you all the way to where he wants you to be. And he wants me to, to tell you also too, 
you will make mistakes on this journey. Don't be afraid of the mistakes. The mistakes will teach you what he needs you to know. The mistakes will build you, give you strength for whatever he's got for you today. Father, I thank you for your word today. I thank you for your just loving kindness because it's better than life. God, I pray, I pray that the light of your love will surround your people today. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I'll see you guys next week. Bye. And in that scripture, too, uh, the man had four friends. There is someone, sorry, I know what I was about to sign up, but the Lord is still speaking. There is, there are millions of people out there with friend that have friends that you see you're, you're supposed to help do a mighty work, but you say nothing to them. You let them waste away with their talents. And no, you can't make anybody do something that they don't want to do. But you can ask the Lord, how, how do you encourage them? I see this talent in them. There are some uh, people that have been getting visions about their friends uh, doing some wonderful things and you see that person just wasting away and you're not saying anything but he's saying to those friends speak up because remember it was the friends who got the man to their healing sometimes people can't see what's in them but sometimes friends or family or people around them can and he's saying that I've ordained you into, into their lives for you to speak into that. So speak to that friend. Encourage them. Take them to wherever they need to be um, to achieve what God's purpose is in their lives. Uh, and you will see the res result of your persistence. And, and don't let them give up on themselves. Even if they do want to give up on themselves. Don't let them give up on yourselves. You know what you see. You know the visions you're having. I was, um, I was watching Holly Furtick one day. Uh, who, who is the wife of Stephen Furtick, and she was saying um, her friends encouraged her to uh, start the Bible study, and now she does those Bible studies every year. It was her friends who encouraged her to do that. So friends, the right friends, can and will encourage you, will see stuff in you, that will take you to another level. Now those, now those Bible studies are blessing people every year. So take care, people. See you next week.